Discovery is unearthing the unknown. Challenging assumptions. Finding answers to centuries-old questions. Following your curiosity. Understanding the world we live in. At Johns Hopkins, discovery is a way of life. With our scientists and scholars leading the way, we forge new paths to discovery. Here are some of our stories. We are working to discover what happened at the beginning of the universe. To do this, we need to look at the light that's been traveling for 13.8 billion years across the universe. That's why we've built a telescope called CLASS. It's situated on top of a high mountain in the Atacama Desert in Chile. We built it here on the campus of Johns Hopkins University. We've had students involved in every step of the process from designing hardware to building it to operating the telescope and then finally analyzing data from the telescope. I'm particularly interested in sociodemographic gaps in educational attainment. The fact that in the U.S. Uh, black students uh, on average attain much lower levels of education than white students. So some of my current research has shown that economically disadvantaged black male students are far less likely to drop out of high school if they have a black elementary school teacher. So the hope is that we can use these discoveries to inform policy that could help students to reach their full potential which would help the students themselves, but would also benefit society as a whole. I love being a biologist because I get to really dig in and uncover the basics about life. As living beings, we all start as one cell. That one cell divides and multiplies and becomes trillions of cells that become a baby. We know there is a code called the epigenetic code that drives that process. My research team wants to crack that code so that once cells misfire, we can get them back on track. Cancer cells were once normal cells. They are dangerous because they take resources from normal cells and divide and grow for no purpose. If we can discover how to control the cells and drag them back to normal paths, we can cure cancer. Here in the Bat Lab, we use bats as our research subjects but we're not explicitly and only interested in bats. We're really interested in general questions about how humans and other animals take in information from the environment and use that information to guide behavior. We're also interested in attention and perception, navigation and memory. So bats are particularly good subjects because they produce sounds that result in echoes that they use to guide their behavior. So we have a window to understanding what information is important to the bat as it's performing different tasks. Few people today have heard of Chester Himes, but the little-known African-American writer was a contemporary of James Baldwin's. In a book I just wrote about Chester Himes, I argue that he was a pioneer in black writing and that his work, his novels, his social commentary, it's right up there with that of Ralph Ellison, Richard Wright, and James Baldwin. I spent much of my academic career in covering lost details of African-Americans trying to reconstruct human life and revive lost works. My current research is on the life of Frederick Douglass. I teach a class called Mapping Frederick Douglass's Escape, an historic Maryland odyssey. My students and I visit sites where Douglass lived and worked, and we make presentations to local universities and museums about our findings. Sharing our discoveries with the public is the best way to bring history to life and better understand the present. I work at the Temple of Mut, which is in Luxor, Egypt, and after we'd been working there for just a few years, we found something that looked like stone, so we began to go very slowly clearing it. Suddenly we saw a long inscription, and as the inscription got larger and larger, we realized eventually that we were looking at the back pillar of a statue, an over life size statue of one of the best known queens of ancient Egypt, Queen Tia the wife of Amenhotep III in the 14th century BC. It was a remarkable discovery and almost completely perfect. And we're so happy that it's now in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Discover what you can do at Johns Hopkins University.